Hello everyone. Welcome to my channel Biochemistry Concepts. This video is about what is carnitine and what is carnitine transport system, its role in the fatty acid metabolism. Coming to the concept of this video, the mechanism used to extract the energy present in the fatty acids is oxidation. Major type of oxidation is beta oxidation of fatty acids. The enzymes of beta oxidation they are present in mitochondria whereas fatty acids are present in the cytosol. So the problem is these fatty acids particularly long chain fatty acids they cannot cross the mitochondrial membrane. To overcome this problem a carrier molecule a transport molecule is required. This transport molecule is carnitine. So as it is involved in transport of fatty acids, uh, this is known as carnitine shuttle or carnitine transport system. So chemically carnitine is beta hydroxy gamma trimethyl ammonium butyrate. It is a carrier molecule. So it acts like a transporter. Coming to biosynthesis of carnitine, synthesis starts with trimethylation of lysine means three methyl groups are added to the lysine and in lysine they are added to the epsilon amino group. So this trimethylation of lysine takes place in the first reaction and the donor of that methyl group is active form of methionine that is S adenosyl methionine in short SAM S A M. So SAM supplies the methyl groups, three methyl groups are added to the epsilon amino group of lysine to form trimethyl lysine. So this trimethyl lysine in the next four reactions is converted into carnitine. So the amino acids required for the synthesis of carnitine are lysine and methionine and this synthesis mainly takes place in liver and also to some extent in the kidney. Coming to functions, as we discussed, this carnitine acts like a carrier molecule. So you can compare with a ferry boat. This transports a long chain fatty acyl CoA across the mitochondrial membrane. So these long chain fatty acids, they cannot cross the mitochondrial membrane by themselves. So they require a transporter that can transport these long chain fatty acids from the cytosol into the mitochondria. To understand the function of carnitine, let us consider a simple example. So here in this picture you can see there is a boat and there are two ends of the river and now the person wants to move from one end to the other end of the river for that he uses the boat. So here you can compare the one end as cytosol and the other end as mitochondria and the person moving is the fatty acid. So this fatty acid enters into a boat and this boat carries from this end to the other end that is it carries the fatty acid from cytosol to the mitochondria. So here the fatty acid requires the help of a transporter and that transporter is carnitine and the transporter here is carnitine and this carnitine also facilitates exit of acetyl-CoA and acetoacetyl-CoA from mitochondria to cytosol. So this carnitine is required only for the transport of long chain fatty acids that means the fatty acids that have 16 to 22 carbon atoms or the fatty acids that have more than 24 carbon atoms they require a transporter but the fatty acids which come under short chain and medium chain with 2 to 6 carbons and 8 to 4 carbon atoms they do not require any transporter they can cross the mitochondrial membrane and they enter into the mitochondria Inside the mitochondria, they are activated and beta oxidation takes place. Coming to the mechanism of carnitine transport. So, the basic thing is we need to transport fatty acids from the cytosol into the mitochondria. So, fatty acids, they are activated to form acyl-CoA. So, any fatty acid in its CoA form is called as its activated fatty acid. For example, the most common fatty acid oxidized by beta oxidation is palmitic acid. So its active form is palmitile CoA. So this is the meaning of activation. So once the fatty acid is activated, so that is done by an enzyme called as acyl CoA synthetase present in the outer mitochondrial membrane. So this activated fatty acid can cross the outer mitochondrial membrane. 
when you see the permeability of outer and inner mitochondrial membranes outer mitochondrial membrane is permeable to most of the molecules whereas inner mitochondrial membrane has selective permeability so that's why acyl coa can cross the inner mitochondrial membrane and enters into the intermembrane space space present between outer and inner mitochondrial membrane so in this space this acyl coa is converted into acyl carnitine so when you see the acyl coa there are two parts acyl and coa so the acyl part is transferred to carnitine to form acyl carnitine so this is important because this acyl group can cross the inner mitochondrial membrane only when it binds with carnitine so that's why acyl carnitine has to be formed and this formation of acyl carnitine is catalyzed by enzyme called as carnitine acyl transferase 1 in short cat1 as we discussed the major fatty acid is palmitoyl coa so this enzyme is also called as carnitine palmitoyl coa transferase 1 so acyl carnitine which is formed in this intermembrane space is now transported into the mitochondrial matrix by the action of enzyme called as translocase so now the acyl carnitine is present in the mitochondrial matrix but for beta oxidation we require only acyl coa so again this acyl coa has to be formed from acyl carnitine and this reaction is catalyzed by carnitine acyl transferase 2 so cat2 if it is palmitic acid it is called as cpt2 so this cat2 enzyme catalyzes a reaction where carnitine is regenerated and also acyl coa so this reaction requires acyl carnitine plus coenzyme a when these react in the presence of cat2 acyl coa is regenerated and also carnitine so this acyl coa enters into beta oxidation and carnitine is transported again into the intermembrane space by translocase so this enzyme translocase is actually called as carnitine acyl carnitine translocase because it is actually translo translocating both acyl carnitine and carnitine it is moving acyl carnitine from intermembrane space to the matrix and carnitine from the matrix to the intermembrane space this is how carnitine helps in the transport of fatty acids into mitochondria coming to clinical applications of carnitine so first one is carnitine deficiency so in this condition mainly it is reported in infants so there is impaired fatty acid oxidation because fatty acids they cannot be moved from the cytosol to the mitochondria so when this fails energy cannot be extracted from the fatty acids when that happens more amount of glucose is utilized because fatty acids are not able to provide energy and that is the reason for episodes of hypoglycemia seen in case of carnitine deficiency come to one more condition that is translocase deficiency so this leads to defective metabolism of long chain fatty acids in this condition muscle cramps are precipitated by fasting exercise and a high fat diet 